Chapter 12, The Sweetest Sounds August entered Natalie's shop alone. A gold pocket watch, its cracked crystal removed and its inside scattered, rested on the counter unattended. There was a rustling from the back, and August quietly crept around and studied the items for sale. There were pieces missing, spaces where items had been removed. He stared at all the glass pieces, a pair of drop earrings, a flower brooch, and a spiral quill, so desperately that their outlines remained in his vision when he looked away. None of them looked like his mother's bracelet. Be out in a moment, shouted Natalie. August neared the counter, trying to recall any memory of Ella's father. He could remember the man complaining about how much his watch was always fast, but had it been silver or gold? Natalie appeared from the back and stopped in her tracks. What do you want? I need, need a truthful answer about where you got some of your items, he said. Those collar pins I bought, you didn't want to sell them, did you? Where were they from? I made them, she said quickly and cleared her throat. Just because you think you know something doesn't mean I have to tell you everything about my trade secrets. So it's a coincidence that the day after I handed those pins over to my friend, he forgot someone? Asked August. The collar pins, the locket, the ring, the cane, the basket, the gloves, the brooches. She flinched at the mention of the brooches. You know the ones, don't you? All of those items, you ha have something in common. And there are others in your shop like them, aren't there? Asked August. I have the gold falcon brooch. You used a cuff from an old glove to make it, didn't you? Natalie's head tilted and her mouth opened. Was she wondering how he knew that? The person you gave them to lost their memories? She asked. That wasn't fear. She actually looked upset by that knowledge. It had barely been a day, but he lost them. Madame Barden lost her memories of Blake, by the way, said August. It all comes back to those items. I know one of the things they have in common, and I don't mean that they all came from you. Where did you get them from? Natalie, she shook her head. So if you didn't get them from a supplier, did you get them yourself? He asked, dreading the rest of the conversation. There was something holding her back from talking. I bought them, she whispered. I didn't... I bought them. From whom, Natalie? asked August, but she didn't answer. Did you know they were stolen? She steeled herself and shook her head. I don't... Her voice grew higher and tighter. I didn't know. Her gaze flicked behind him. The door creaked open and a set of footsteps slowly crossed the store. I got suspicious about how long this was taking because I was certain you would agree to tell him who sold you everything, said Blanche frustration shaking through her. Nat, tell me truthfully right now, why a brooch made with the gold cuff I left at the memorial when my mother died was sold from your shop. Natalie seemed to wither, shoulders slumping, and face falling into deep, uneasy lines. I didn't know where they, came, where they were from, but you knew they were stolen. You figured that out after August talked to you, didn't you? asked Blanche. Why won't you say who else is involved? I don't believe for a moment you did it yourself. Natalie remained silent. You're going to be detained, Blanche said. I'm not telling anyone why. No reason to break their hearts yet. Blanche escorted Natalie to the town's guardhouse, keeping the whole procession in inconspicuous. August remained in the shop and searched behind the counter. The accounts had been moved, and even more pages were missing now. The lockbox... He had seen the last time they were there had been hidden in a crate and covered in papers. August covered the pocket watch on the counter with a cloth and dropped the lockbox next to him. He had no idea what the combination might be. Martin and Ella arrived a few moments later. Blanche said Natalie was holding her tongue, Martin asked before he was even through the door. August nodded. If Natalie was stealing, Blanche wants Fresne to handle that part, not the court. We need to hand over anything we find to her. People are going to be furious when they find out, said Ella, which is why Blanche asked us not to say anything about it, August said, laying his hand over the cloth-covered watch. Ella, I can remember every anecdote your father told us about it, but I can't remember what metal his pocket watch was. She smiled. Silver? That's right, said August. 
I haven't seen it yet. She joined him in at, at the counter. Her fingers brushed the cloth. Did you ask that because there's a pocket watch under here? It's gold, August said, removing the cloth. She touched his hand. Thank you. After that, they went through everything. None of them was sure they would be able to identify anything from the memorial, but it was still worth it to dub double check in case there was anything, another item as recognizable as, a, as the falcon. Ella found no items with glass beads like the ones on his mother's bracelet and no pocket watch. Martin and August went through the remaining records to try to find the code for the lockbox. The only new thing August noticed, though, was that Natalie's rent was steady. She paid it out in two small amounts every month, and that she was either a terrible accountant or giving away money without recording it. Her sales didn't match up with her income at the end of a handful of months. The five pages were still missing from the book, and he couldn't find them despite searching every nook of the shop. A few more pages had been cut out, too, including the ones with the sales for Madame Monet's locket and Martin... Martin's color pun collar pins. This is the only thing we can't get to, said August, setting the small lockbox on top of the counter. Yes? Yeah.